Joint Occupational Health and Safety Committees. The Workers' Compensation Board of PEI is responsible for workplace safety legislation on Prince Edward Island. This legislation is the Occupational Health and Safety Act and its regulations. The OHS Act and its regulations describe the minimum standard of occupational health and safety on PEI and the general safety principles for island workplaces. The OHS Act outlines the responsibilities of the committee and others in the workplace. The duties of the committee can be found under Section 25. The regulations set out specific requirements for occupational health and safety risks and hazards. Although the regulations do not reference safety committees, they do provide the minimum safety requirements for particular tasks that may be performed in the workplace. For example, refer to the asbestos regulations when asbestos is present in the workplace to prevent exposure and to learn the safety standards related to asbestos abatement. It's important for committees to be aware and understand these pieces of legislation to help ensure the employer is meeting the minimum safety standards required for a healthy and safe workplace. Internal Responsibility System The Internal Responsibility System is the foundation of OHS legislation. The philosophy is that everyone in the workplace, both employers and workers, is responsible for their own safety and for the safety of their co-workers. This responsibility includes workers who are not members of the safety committee. Acts and regulations are in place, but do not always advise the specific steps to take for compliance. The internal responsibility system holds employers responsible for determining such steps to ensure health and safety of all workers. Workers that are closest to the work can provide valuable input for committees in maintaining a safe workplace. The internal responsibility system promotes safety culture in the workplace, encourages best practices, and ensures compliance with the Act and its regulations. What is a safety committee? Safety committees are a group of worker and employer representatives who work together to address health and safety issues in their workplace. The committee provides a link between management and staff so that health and safety solutions can be developed together. When there are 20 or more workers in a workplace, the Act states that a Joint Occupational Health and Safety Committee must be established. The committee must be selected in accordance with Section 25.6 of the OHS Act, where one half of the members must be selected by the union or by the workers that the members represent. The other half of the members shall be selected by the employer. This ensures equal representation of workers and employer representatives on the committee. The committee size will be determined by the workplace and should be included in the committee's Rules of Procedure document. The Rules of Procedure document outlines how the committee will perform its duties and functions. Establishing this document will assist in ensuring a successful committee. Duties of the Safety Committee Section 25 of the Act outlines the duties of a committee. Members are expected to have good attendance and committees must meet monthly to discuss and review any OHS-related topics. Committee members must know how to bring forward a formal recommendation to their employer and should establish a process for making recommendations. Committees that establish and follow a process for making health and safety recommendations are better prepared to make timely suggestions that support the OHS of all workers. Committee duties include inquiries or investigations related to the occupational health and safety of workers, frequent workplace inspections, which are a proactive measure in any health and safety program, Having thorough, regular inspections can help reduce injuries and illnesses in the workplace. Committees and employers both have specific roles and responsibilities when it comes to responding to and investigating workplace incidents. Internal procedures and policies should identify the necessary personnel and the required training and resources necessary to conduct an effective investigation. Completing an investigation after an incident occurs is key to identifying hazards or problems and ensuring similar events will not happen again in the future. Committee members must be able to provide their employer with advice and information regarding personal protective equipment, safety devices, or any policies and programs required by the Act to keep the workers safe on the job. Committees are required to maintain OHS records and meeting minutes. 
Keeping accurate and up-to-date records is necessary to properly assess the performance of the workplace safety program. Proper documentation will give the committee and the employer a complete history of how the OHS program has evolved and progressed over time. Committee Member Roles It is common practice for committees to designate various roles in order to help committees function more effectively. The most common roles are Chair and Secretary. These roles are typically elected by the committee itself. The roles should have limited terms of one to two years of service, so the committee should define each role and term length in its rules of procedure. Chair. A chair can be a worker representative, an employer representative, or the committee can decide to have co-chairs. The chair typically ensures that each meeting is planned effectively, including arranging the meeting date, ensuring each member is notified of the meeting, and making sure that the meeting runs efficiently. This includes ensuring that all members' contributions are on topic and that discussions are guided toward definite conclusions. Where recommendations are put forward at the meeting, the chair ensures they are written in the minutes, sent to the employer, followed up on, and the status brought back to the next meeting. The chair ensures that the committee is operating within its rules of procedure and scope. Committee dynamics can fluctuate from one composition to another, so it is important that the chair ensures that all members' contributions are respected and members are reminded to keep their conduct respectful and professional. Secretary. The secretary provides support to the chair. They may do so by compiling and distributing the agenda before each meeting. The secretary records the minutes of the meeting, circulates the minutes to members for review, and ensures they get posted after being approved. It is good practice to highlight the action items arising from the meeting and ensure the committee's recommendations are captured accurately in the minutes. Ideally, minutes should be prepared immediately after the meeting. Additional duties may include writing reports and any correspondence as needed, as well as assisting the chair as required. The secretary may or may not be a voting member of the committee, and the committee may choose to alternate this position between meetings. All members. The participation and contributions of each employer and worker representative on the committee is important for the committee to function effectively. All members should regularly attend all meetings and participate in the discussions. Members bring experience and their own perspective to committee discussions. It's important that these experiences are shared and that the recommendations include the perspectives of each committee member. Forum is typically required when a decision is being made by the committee and therefore strong attendance at meetings is necessary. Quorum refers to the minimum acceptable level of attendance of employer and worker representatives needed to make the proceedings of a meeting valid. Quorum is typically included as a clause within the committee's rules of procedure, and it ensures that there is sufficient representation present at meetings before any recommendations or decisions can be made. Participation is critical for committee members. Delegated members should be involved in workplace inspections, incident investigations, right to refuse unsafe work situations, and solutions to safety-related complaints. Too few contributions by members may mean that the recommendations may not reflect all the experience and perspectives of members. It can be easy to get distracted by topics that are not necessarily safety-related or that are outside the scope of the committee. Members must be mindful of the scope of the committee not exceeding their authority, and seek assistance when needed. If committee discussions begin to move into matters more governed by labor relations or human resources, then consult a human resource advisor for these topics. Employers hold the greatest responsibility of all. Employers can encourage safety culture by supporting the committee and addressing hazardous situations in a timely manner. Employers can also support committees and health and safety by establishing and maintaining OHS policies and programs, instruction and supervision to help workers complete their tasks and duties. Worker training may include proper use and maintenance of tools and equipment, instruction of safe work procedures, and reviewing OHS policies. Worker Responsibilities as part of the internal responsibility system, workers, even those who are not members of the committee, are required to work safely and follow any OHS policies established in the workplace. 
It is also expected that they correct any unsafe working conditions if possible, and if they are unable to correct the situation themselves, they must report the hazard to a supervisor. Workers must cooperate with both the employer and the committee. This may include working safely, following any safety procedures, wearing personal protective equipment, reporting any defective equipment or workplace hazards, or assisting committee members while they complete workplace inspections or investigations. Everyone in the workplace has a role to play in health and safety. Internal safety professionals, also known as internal safety officers and consultants. Your organization may have one or more safety professionals responsible for supporting and promoting safety in the organization. While this person may not be an active safety committee member, they provide consultative support to your committee and supervisors. These safety professionals help establish and promote a culture of safety and prevention that is essential to any workplace. Safety professionals may also assist the safety committee with performing workplace inspections, investigations, and establishing safe work procedures. They may provide training to workers and the safety committee when occupational health and safety education is required. Safety professionals support the safety committee by promoting the internal responsibility system researching and sharing best practices, and assisting with monitoring occupational health and safety compliance within the organization. Typically, this person leads the annual OHS policy and program review by coordinating with the safety committee and leadership. Similar to the safety committee, safety professionals ensure leadership is informed of significant incidents, patterns, and trends to ensure the proper controls are implemented to prevent future incidents. By working together, we can all promote a safety culture and encourage a healthy and safe workplace. Like this video? Don't forget to check out our Guide to Joint Occupational Health and Safety Committees, available now. For more information, detailed guidelines, and sample documents, please visit our website at wcb.pe.ca. To learn more about other OHS topics, find our Guide to OHS Legislation app on Google Play and the Apple Store. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to contact the Occupational Health and Safety Division of the Workers' Compensation Board of Prince Edward Island. We are here to help.